I am sick and tired of college YouTubers. Every EC video I've watched, students will just name drop every single extracurricular they did, NHS, Science Olympiad, and HOSA, and all I see in the comments down below is, oh, should I do these clubs too? Are these amazing? Are these gonna get me into Harvard? But the reality is knowing the extracurriculars that these random people did is not going to help you. That's what this video is going to change. I guarantee that if you watch this video until the very end and give me your undivided attention, Attention, you will walk away with the knowledge and the skills to not only craft an extracurricular and figure out what to do, but how to actually write it on your common application so that you succeed. First, we're going to speed run through my extracurriculars and I'm going to show you how I wrote stuff and why I wrote it that way. Then I'll give you three practical takeaways Yes, actual information that you can walk away with after watching a video. I know, it's so rare these days. That will help you completely level up your common application and ultimately get you into the school of your dreams just like it did for me. I'm Rishab, I'm an incoming freshman at Harvard College and these are my extracurriculars. My first extracurricular was in the category of research, and once you launch your common application, you'll see that it gives you a list of categories from which you can choose what you wanna put your extracurricular in. Then it asks you what your role was. For me, this was software engineering intern and independent researcher. Then the most important part, which is the description comes along. And this is where it gets really interesting because these are things that you can actually optimize in your application. Let me read you what the description for this activity was and then I'm going to show you what I initially wrote at the beginning and illustrate what a stark difference those two are. The description I ended up using was conducted novel bioengineering research, won top award in brackets 50k at Regeneron ISEF, licensed tool to lattice automation, first author research paper. Now let's compare this description to what I initially wrote. Completed software engineering internship at Lattice Automation on improving code on optimization, one Regeneron Young Scientist Award. Do you guys see the difference? College admissions officers, they don't have hours to go onto Google and search up and learn what is the Regeneron Young Scientist Award, especially because there are now thousands of competitions. And let's be honest, the award names and titles just seem to change every once in a while and students will be just writing them in weird ways. Many of you know me and know that I won the 2022 Regeneron Young Scientist Award at the International Science and Engineering Fair. And for those of you who actually do science fair, this is a pretty big deal. You know that it's an award that only the top 0.00 whatever percent of people end up getting. But let's say you're an admissions officer. Do you know what this award means? Probably not. So I crafted my extracurricular description to say one top award 50K at Regeneron ISEF rather than saying the actual award name because they can see that award name in my honors section, which by the way, I made an entire video about my stats and honors, so be sure to watch that after this one. So many genuinely smart, deserving students who are passionate about their thing get left out in the college application scene because of just this increasing competitiveness that is causing people to misphrase things intentionally. And this is an unfortunate reality that I just don't see anyone talking about. People will just flat out intentionally misrepresent their awards or what they did to make it seem like something else. Like there are literally thousands of students who go to ISEP every year and Hundreds of them will win some award, but they'll phrase it in such a way that it makes it seem like they won the top most award that, for instance, some other student might have actually gotten. And that's why showing the impact of these awards is incredibly important. And one way of doing that is using numbers, like I did. You can see how I crafted it. You only have a limited number of characters in these descriptions, so it is essential that you showcase your impact and what you actually did. Now, I'm gonna try to speed run through the rest of my extracurriculars, but keep in mind at the end of the video I'm gonna reveal the three biggest things that you need to keep in mind when it comes to this extracurricular list. My next extracurricular was also research. I was a Research Science Institute scholar or RSI scholar and if you don't know what RSI is I don't blame you. It's something that's very niche within the science and kind of STEM community of high schoolers. It's a research summer program that's hosted by the Center for Excellence in Education and MIT. It's at MIT and students get paired with mentors to do awesome research 
research, the program is incredibly selective. And in fact, it had an acceptance rate of something around 3.65%. Oh boy. But notice in my description, which I'm about to read to you, I don't mention that number. Selected as RSI 2022 scholar to conduct research at MIT, developed deep learning models to predict brain tumor growth, and wrote first author research paper. Now notice here, I don't say a number. Why is that? Well, the colleges that I was applying to, a lot of these top schools, they already know what RSI is because a lot of the top STEM science students will be having that on their application. You need to really look at the nuance of it and understand the unique extracurricular that you're doing and how it applies to your situation. That's why you can't just blindly follow the advice of some other YouTuber who's telling you to do this activity or this activity. My next EC on the list was also research. And I know at this point, people are gonna be like, Rishabh, the top three activities were all research. Don't you need to show that you're well-rounded? Well, at the end of the video, I'm gonna be debunking that and showing exactly why it's not true. But the reason why I wanna show those three pieces are all research is because that was my spike. It was my biggest thing. It was my biggest passion in high school. And it's something that I'm still really passionate about. The EC's role was student research assistant and the organization it was with was the Oregon Health and Science University. The description was computational pathology research, published two papers in Nature Scientific Data and Frontiers in Oncology, third and fifth author and national JSHS first place. Once again, guys, the key here is to highlight impact. There will be hundreds if not thousands of students nowadays doing science research and applying to college. And the problem is that you know, it's not that so many students are doing research. I see that a common sentiment everywhere that, oh, too many people are doing science research in high school. There's not too many people who are doing research. That's a good thing at the end of the day. The bad part is not actually caring about it or not actually being passionate about it. And for you, how do you highlight that you actually care? How do you highlight that amongst the thousands of students or hundreds of students who are just faking that passion? Well, the way you can do it is through showing impact, showing how dedicated you were to the activity. Publishing papers in a graduate level journal or even beyond is not an easy feat. I published papers and won an award and that sets me apart. Now, extracurricular four, on the other hand, is not research, it was paid work. And I served as the chief executive officer of my own company that I created called Cafe Development. My description was loves creating educational YouTube videos, aha, wink, wink, and 13 million views. I uh, founded Discord development company serving 2.9 million users, earning some amount per year. Now, once again, I kind of highlighted what I was doing, creating YouTube videos, and then I showed the impact. How many people was I reaching? How much money was being made? These are all figures that you can include to demonstrate impact. Now, a lot of people are probably wondering why did I include the statement loves creating YouTube videos? Why do you say loves? Can't you just say created YouTube videos? That saves you a whole six characters on that list. That's a really great point. And I thought about it a lot. And the reason why I included it is because I wanted to show that it was something that I really enjoyed doing. Now for my research activities, I kind of discussed how I got into research a little bit in some of my essays, or that was clear on my rec letters that I was really passionate about STEM and science research. But for creating YouTube videos, they'll be like, this doesn't make sense. How does that create the student's story? Why did they start a YouTube channel? I'm just really curious about that. Do they do it for college applications? In my case, no, I created YouTube videos back when I was in like sixth grade. And I did it because I loved to do it. I did it because it was fun and I wanted to show that to build the story around it of how the heck did this guy even get involved in YouTube? Why did he start creating those videos? Extracurricular number five was community service. I served as the president of a nonprofit organization I started called the Samyuk Science Society. At the time, we had mentored over 3,000 students in STEM workshops, and we were also sponsored by organizations like Google. I led a team of 30 plus students around the world. I think it's clear what I'm gonna say again, impact. Given the state of college admissions, again, there's gonna be thousands of students with their own nonprofit initiatives, which again, I don't think that's a bad thing. That people often say that, hey, why are so many people creating nonprofits? This is a bad thing. It's not, students are doing community service. That's a good thing. The problem comes to when students are just creating it for the sake of college application. Now, how does the college know that I actually wanted to do it and that I actually you know, spent a lot of time doing it? 
Well, I show impact. Extracurricular number six is community service. And in this one, I served as a senior patrol leader and was an Eagle Scout for my Boy Scout troop. What did I do? I led a troop of 90 scouts for fundraising, service projects, and campouts. I built a bee pollinator habitat for my Eagle project with the city. There are 60,000 Eagle Scouts every year. But I guarantee not all of them show what they were doing, why they were doing it, with how many scouts they were doing it with. Extracurricular number seven was athletics. My role was a varsity distance athlete. My organization was Westview High School. Now, my description, enjoy daily practice with team, competed in varsity 6A district and invitational meets, ran 800 meter, and blah, blah, blah. Now, once again, you'll notice the words that I put enjoyed daily practice with team. I feel like that's a common thing now where students will just join a bunch of activities to kind of pad their college applications. But I wanted to show that this is something I've actually been doing for a long time. I've been running since like second grade in you know the local running club and stuff like that. And so I wanted to show that I actually enjoy doing this thing and that's how it factors into my store. EC number eight was other club slash activity and I don't really have any transferable advice since this was something that was super unique to me. So I'll just leave it on the screen in case you're interested, but let's get on to EC number nine. This was speech and debate and my role was event captain. The organization I was in was the National Speech and Debate Association. I earned the Academic All-American Award, which was top 2%. Here, notice that I actually put the rate. For RSI, I didn't put acceptance rate 3.65% because all the colleges mostly know what RSI is because it's such a well-established program. But for Academic All-American, they might be like, mm, what does that actually mean? Well, it meant that I was in the top 2% of speech and debate members. In addition, I won third place in the state and coach students on debate skills every week after school. Now notice that this is my ninth extracurricular activity and I still have impact. I'm not just putting in random filler activities like, oh, NHS or HOSA. I'm actually doing stuff that I like. And that's an advice that I'll give you in just a second. EC number 10 was music slash vocal. My role was choir member. Organization, I put Westview High and my description was bass singer and school concert choir, enjoy singing and choir for the last nine years. Once again, I'm showing that I did this activity for a long time because I actually cared. If I wanted to join a filler activity, it would be NHS, but I didn't. I did things that I actually enjoyed doing. And this brings me to my top three pieces of advice that you can take away. Number one, do fun things. Guys, do things that are actually fun. Don't waste your time on NHS or some random filler club that everyone tells you you need to be in. I didn't spend one second in NHS or some garbage club. Number two, show impact. I think that's been really clear with what I've all I've said, but you don't just need to show numbers. I show numbers in a lot of ways, but another aspect of impact is emotion. Showing an appeal to pathos and showing that you really care about something and you did it because you were passionate passionate about. Number three is your spike. Now I have an entire video about my spike and how you can create a spike for college. Colleges want a well-rounded student body and the best way to do that isn't just to select students who are a jack of all trades, it's to choose students who each have their own spike or their own unique thing and fill the student body with those students. Once again, I made an entire video about how you can find your spike and how you can create one. I highly recommend watching it. So that being said, click on the right to watch my video about spikes or click on the left to watch part one of this video about my stats and honors. And with that, I'll see you next time.